All right, I'm going to do a video today on blossom end rot and how to prevent it. So, the first question is, what is blossom end rot? Now, I don't have any tomatoes that are suffering from it yet of this year. I hope to not have any. But, basically, when you got a tomato, you'll see at the bottom that the end will be black or brown or usually black or brown it just looks like it's rotting away basically so the next question is what causes that now there's a lot there's a few different reasons there could be uh, irregular watering uh, long distances between watering too much watering so watering can play an issue but the answer is usually that there's not enough calcium and magnesium in the soil or in your fertilizer so how do I prevent it from happening? Well, this is my first thing I do is when I buy potting soil, now you could probably find a, a, a potting soil geared towards tomatoes. I don't know. Uh, I have a decent potting soil in here. It's called Sunshine Mix. It's not bad, but I don't think they add any fertilizer to it or anything, so I add my own fertilizer and... Um, and I'm, what I'm about to show you uh, this I should say also that this video is geared towards uh, people growing their tomatoes in pots and I'll explain why at the end but uh, what I'm saying doesn't fully apply to growing it in a, in a plot or a field or even maybe in a raised bed so the first thing that I do my main solution is to add calcium um, and magnesium to my potting soil and the product I use to do that is called agricultural limestone now, this is a 50 pound bag as you can see when I bought it it was 13 bucks so it's not very expensive and it goes a long way um, this bag here is probably two or three years old um, it also goes by a few other names you can see here uh, dolomitic uh, limestone I think it's also got a calcitic li listed here I've mostly heard people going for dolomitic limestone this is called agricultural limestone um, I've seen it as garden lime there's also a brand name product out there called azomite it has a lot of other trace minerals in it it might be more suited for uh, raised beds or a plot um, but you could use it in your potting soil too um, now what this does is I believe it helps with nutrient uptake but I do know for sure that it helps prevent blossom end rot and this particular product and you need to probably if you can find it on your bag uh, you should follow the instructions there this I add at about one cup per about 10 gallons so maybe about a tenth of a cup per um, per gallon of soil you don't need to be exact but you don't want to put in too much because that can cause problems so it's not going to be the end of the world if you go a little over that but you don't want to go crazy now you can see in there it's like a chalky it almost looks like mortar mix for cement it's like a, even kind of like flour now, adding this alone is probably going to stop you from running into blossom end rot. Um, especially if you water it when your soil feels dry. You usually want to stick your finger in about an inch down and if it feels dry, then it's probably time to water your plant. Um, now another product I like to use is a fertilizer. It's a granular fertilizer. It's called Happy Frog. Listed as natural and organic. Um, I don't it's from a company called Fox Farm it's uh, this is the tomato and vegetable version they have a lot of different versions of it it's a granular fertilizer uh, NPK 745 nitrogen phosphorus potassium um, those are percentages and you see on the back that this particular one a lot of a lot of fertilizers might not have a lot of trace nutrients and stuff in them, trace minerals. 
see if I can get this right. And you can see this particular one, the tomato vegetable one, adds calcium and magnesium. So if there was another NPK C, you'd have another 5 for the calcium and a little bit of magnesium, which helps with the uh, uptake of the nutrients. You know, and it has instructions here on how much to add. Um, I usually throw in a decent amount into the soil mixture. Uh, maybe, a, maybe a cup or two into a pot this big, which is about 10 gallons. Um, I need to add some now. I'm going to try and do this with one hand. I've been going for more than a month now with uh, what I started with. And you can see down in there, I'm going to add another fourth a cup per plant per pot. And that should keep me going for a few more weeks, maybe even a month. It just sort of sprinkle it around. You can top dress it at this point. When I put it in the potting soil to start, I really mix it in good with the soil because I'm trying, you know, to essentially make it a long lasting fertilizer for the plants through the whole season. Um, now, if you do all that, you're using a fertilizer with calcium and magnesium and you're adding lime to the soil and you still manage to find a way to um, get blossom end rot. There's products here. I don't have them with me because I haven't had this problem in a while, but I have had it in the past and it does work. There's products out there that are usually, they're liquid and they're usually listed as CalMeg. Um, a company called Botanicare makes them, um, Earth Juice. Uh, any a lot of people make them a lot of companies make it you can find it if you have a specialty shop like an organics or a hydroponic store near your house um, near where you live but you can also just go online go on google and search for calmeg fertilizer c-a-l-m-g or m-a-g calmeg um, that's calcium and magnesium it's liquid it's not a permanent solution but it is a quick fix um, you might lose the you'll probably lose the tomatoes that already have the blossom end rot but adding it in at the recommended rates will prevent uh, future uh, tomatoes from getting it you could probably at that point top dress with some lime too that's a longer term solution It'll probably get you through the season, but the cow mag will be a quick fix. The the top dressed limestone is probably going to take a few weeks to really take effect. Now, um, I should add, if you don't have a specialty place nearby for like an agricultural limestone, they are starting to carry stuff like this at Lowe's and Home Depot, uh, a company called Espoma, Epsoma, I'm not sure, E-S-P-O-M-A, I think. Um, they sell a product in a smaller bag called Garden Lime. That is essentially, the, it's the same stuff. It, uh, you can find it there. So this isn't a, a hard to find. You're not going to need to ship it. Um, you don't want to ship a 50-pound bag. That's going to cost a fortune. So it's not like it used to be. It's not that hard to find. You can also add um, egg shells. If you save your eggs throughout the year, uh, say, or not the eggs, but the, the shells, save them somewhere for the year out in the garage or whatever. Every time you eat eggs, keep the shells. And then uh, when it comes time to, to uh, get your potting soil together, crush them up and mix them in with the potting soil. And that'll work pretty well too. <clears throat> I've heard people going to... Um, feed stores or farm stores tractor supply type places to get the oyster shell that they feed to chickens i don't know if that works i'm a little skeptical because it's not really pulverized it's just the shells uh, i'd much rather have a pulverized powdered version but if it's all you can find it's worth a shot um, if you don't eat eggs it's worth a shot that kind of thing so those are ways to add it 
to the soil. Um, now the reason I said before that this is more geared towards potting soil than uh, raised beds, permanent places, uh, a big garden like mine. You can add azomite or limestone not that often, if at all. You're going to want to go to your county extension office or somewhere else and get your soil tested. You need to find out the pH of your soil and how much calcium and magnesium is in it because it may not need it at all. Um, or the other problem is, is you know, it's calc, it's limestone. It's quite uh, basic. Its pH is above seven, quite a bit. So it can really make your soil. I shouldn't have said basic. I apologize to all the science people. What I meant is alkaline. It's quite alkaline. pH is above seven. And it will make your soil alkaline for a while. So you may need to counteract it with uh, something more acidic like peat moss or even a soil acidifier like sulfur. So it's not um, not something you want to throw in willy-nilly if you've got a more permanent solution. And in a more permanent place, you might want to consider that product I mentioned before, azomite, because it has a lot of trace minerals which is nice to add to your soil. Um, it's not as big of a deal on the potting soil. I've never had any problems with it taking my pH too high in my tomatoes. I mean, you can see my tomatoes, they're pretty good. Um, I don't see anything too bad happening. You see some yellowing down there. That might actually be nutrient burn. I may have added too much nutrient at one point, but also, if you've grown tomatoes before, you know they just like to start looking ugly at some point. Um, I think that pretty much sums it up. Let's see. Blossom end rot is the black stuff on the end of tomatoes that you're growing. Um, comes from irregular watering, or in what I find to be the case, it, um, the lack of calcium and magnesium in the soil. You can prevent it by adding agricultural limestone, dolomitic limestone, garden lime, eggshells, azomite, maybe oyster feed, chicken feed. Um, and if you have it now, this year, and you haven't prepared uh, your soil with lime in it, you can go get a CalMag, a calcium magnesium liquid fertilizer and just use that through the rest of the season and then prepare your soil in future years. You can use uh, the CalMag products when watering and um, fertilizing in your raised beds or uh, plots, plot type gardens too. Um, a blossom in rot's rough and you want to prevent it. So these are the ways to do it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer. Uh, if I can't answer, I'll try and find a link to send you to. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, happy gardening. Good luck.